in today's video I'm going to continue working on this area, strengthening it up, taking this support out, going to stick an acro underneath there to support it while I do it. So the first things first, we're going to get that rotten piece out of it. Okay, so acro, get that out. Lovely solid piece of 6x6 oak to go in its place. And that way it will support this cross beam here. And I've also got a new timber, one of these, to go right the way across. We'll get fixing in there, support it there, and it'll be supported the other end. That way, you know, we've really gone over the top with the support here. That's got it. Okay. It's time to find out whether this supporting beam is as bad as I think it is. There's only one way to find out. Now I've had a little exploration into the side of it. I can't fully get in there but initially it feels solid but it's hard to get in there so I'm not going to take any chances. I'm taking it out. Well, that's not supported now. There must have been some movement in the past in this area because they've packed it up. Probably took the stone out of the wall and put this one in. Put a stone out of the chimney area to support it so we'll soon find out. This is chestnut by the way. Why it's so dark. Yeah, a little bit of worm there. Probably done good to take it out. Trouble is if the front six inch out is solid, that's all well and good. But if the timber behind it, which goes into the wall pocket, isn't good, then it's kaput. And from what I can feel here, I mean I've probably got Three or four inches of solid timber then start to deteriorate. I think it's more of the fact that it's wedged in there. It's wider at the back than the front of the opening, so obviously I've got to be careful in that area. You know, don't want to lose any stones or anything like that, so yeah, just a bit of patience with this one. Whew. That's it, jacket's off now, main business. Cup of tea. See you in a moment. That's better. Nice cup of tea. Let's have another go. The problem is there's some loose um, there's some loose stones behind it, and they kind of dropped in and wedged it from coming out. So the actual piece will come out if I can get the obstructions out of the way. If it's a lot bigger and wider at the back. I can't get it out, then it will be plan B. These jobs are quite frustrating because you want to sort of go in there, you know, guns are blazing but you, you don't because you do more, more damage than good really and then you end up spending your time rebuilding everything so all it takes is one tiny little stone to lever it out maybe. Okay, plan B. I 
drilled and put a, a six inch nail through the side of it and gently get the crowbar underneath and see whether I can prise it from underneath pulling it forward. Just be able to get under there. Oh, come forward. Yeah, it's come forward about an inch at least. You might be okay, folks. there with it. Shine a torch in there I think and see if there's any stones stopping the obstruction. I mean the worst way is even if I can't get it all out, I mean if I get halfway and it's wedged I'll cut across with the chainsaw, knock it back in. As long as I've got more than two thirds of what I'm projecting out I think I'll be okay. So yeah that's the backup plan. Just got to be patient. I think I'm going to see what's obstructing it. Goes in quite a way. Wow. Yeah. Try again. Oh, here we go. We're free. Wow. Oh my word. <laughs> well I didn't expect to see that. We're through into next door's cottage, the barn. So, wow. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't lose more stone. Right, I better get something in there, too sweet. I'll get that cleared out. I better check I've got something long enough. And this is why it took so long to come out. It's slightly arched, bowed, sorry. A little bit of woodworm, but as you see, it's absolutely solid steel, you know. People don't believe me when I say the outside is soft and the inside is absolutely solid. I mean, my chainsaw was really struggling cutting into that. Now the depth of the wall, the opening, is just over a metre. I've got two big pieces of oak, off cuts from these. Definitely incorporate those, but they're too large. So I'm going to have to cut them down widthways and in height, because that hole does taper. Okay, I'm going to get the hole cleaned out. I'm going to get some mix knocked up, um, some lime mortar. Get some mortar in there, then when I insert the timbers, it'll be nice and secure again. It's actually deeper than a metre. I'm just seeing there's another layer of stone, but I can address the other side from the other side, so that's not a problem. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is get some nice big stones in there, clean them up, um, get some mortar on them, push them right in, pack it full of mortar, deal with this side, and then it doesn't need a can to leave the other side, so it's just a case of filling it up, so that's not a problem. As long as I get a good bit of depth this side, yeah, we'll be winning. So that's a whole bucket of mortar in there, several courses of stone. I've just got one more to go on top. That one in there. 
and then that will give us enough depth to come out uh, no timber so new bit of oak cantilever will stick out here and the new piece of timber will bolt into this still solid right the way through here and pick up with this bolt into there supporting this this and everything so yep belt and braces for this one so now all the stones are mortared in place my next job will be to insert the solid oak timber through there so I'm going to take some measurements and uh, chainsaw time again okay let's get this mask off Now what I plan to do here is the wedge that I cut off earlier. I go like so. I'm going to place this like that. And the plan is once I push the timber up, it will wedge it tight into the opening. So let's see whether that works. Even go in, I don't know. A bit too tight. I'll have to cut the wedge down a bit. down there yeah there's not going to be much tolerance to straighten square it up really but you now what I've got a chance is banging that in without disturbing too much yeah so it's not a lot in it Here goes, let's hope it's not to the point of no return. Yeah, obviously it's going to get harder because it's tapered so the idea is that it starts picking up the underside of the cavity roof. But unfortunately I don't have much say on how it moves and twists but that's the nature of this cottage. Right, might be a sledgehammer job. tight now I don't think I'd like to get that out I will trim the end off once I get the new timber on I will shape it with a chainsaw So once the oak cantilever is in position, it's not far off it from now, what I'll do is the new joist, 
all run. On top of that, I'm going to have to cut out around the different heights. Cut out a little bit here, connect it up to there, and then it'll tie this whole area together. Yep. Like I say, it's all getting covered, the ceiling. It's going to be insulated. It's very important for the fire regulations, really. Um, if you have an open fire and you've got drafts all over the, the ceiling, that'll fuel the fire ever so quick if it spreads, you know. And there's a, a bedroom up above, so it will all be insulated and sealed off. Part of it's uh, fire precautions, really. Yeah, I don't think it looks very pretty neither, but I will make it look nice, definitely. What I've done in the past, in the previous house I had, had a similar problem. We plasterboarded the ceiling and on the joints we put some oak and it looked like, obviously not like beams, but it gave it character, it didn't just look like a flat ceiling. So that's what I'm going to do in here. Trust me, it will look nice. Okay. A little bit of cutting out there to do. That is absolutely solid now. Brilliant. So I've offered a spirit level up there. I've established the level of our new joist. I'm just going to pop some screws in the bottom of that. So that I know where the level is. Now it's very important to check the timber before you cut it. Some ends are better than others. Slight defect that end, so obviously we're going to cut that out. Yeah, just check for splits and twists and uh, use it accordingly. They normally come out a lot easier than this, but because of the knot. What I've done, I run the spirit level through, measured up from the bottom of the spirit level to the underside of the joist going that way. So if it goes in how I measured it, it should fit. The sun has come out, it's very very mild now, unusually so. So we thought, why don't we give the cats a bit of fresh air and sunlight? Now the cats are not going to be let out outside, um, so they're going to be indoor cats, but we are planning to have a big run made in the garden. But until then, they've got this little one and they seem to be enjoying it. Hello! <laughs> How are you enjoying your little enclosure? Hey? Yeah, I know. 
Poor little things. Hmm. Quite intrigued with all the bird song. <laughs> we'll have a bigger cage for you soon. And the weather's better. Yep, I've got to get back to work. It's nearly there. What I've got to do is pack this new timber up to the underside of here and then work my way along. It's nicely sitting on the stone that end, which is what I've needed. So we're supported there. Like I say, we're going to have the stud work wall under there as well. So we're going to jack it up with this acro prop and then it's ready for fixing. Just about, yep, we're on the underside of this new joist here. We're not quite there, but we can pack that. We tight that in. That's better. Right, well, that is nice and tight underneath there now. I'm just going to get a packer off of here onto there, lower this down, and work along. I'm pleased with that. 